This program is brought to you by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu. Um, I always tell people that what distinguishes Silicon Valley is not its successes, but the way in which it deals with failure. We live in an industry, the innovation industry, and we live in a place, Silicon Valley, um, that operates much like the earn run averages for batters in the major leagues. Uh, they're going to strike out more than they hit home runs, and they're going to hit less than 500. That's the deal. That's the deal in the Valley. We're going to hit less than 500. It's by definition the case. This is about experimentation. This is about, innovation is about taking risks to do things that haven't been done before. If you could do them with a level of certainty that would increase the odds above 50%, we wouldn't need Silicon Valley. Big companies would do it, and they do it well. The reason big companies don't venture into what Silicon Valley does is because their business models do not tolerate the level of failure required for innovation. The only business model, solid business model, that has been created to deal with failure and still make substantial amounts of money, so, so substantial that they're able to continually invest in failure, reaping the few successes they can, is the venture capital model. It's a portfolio model, big returns on winners, and a lot of losses. So we live in a world of risk, and we live in a world of failure, and the real issue is how do we deal with that failure? When I travel around and look at the Silicon Valleys of other places in the world, one of the distinguishing factors, as you look at them, is certainly not the infrastructure. You know, they've got cubicles. They've got, uh, you know, they've got broadband. You know, they've got lawyers. They've got accountants. Um, you go to India and you walk into Wipro Emphasis offices and you swear you're here in Silicon Valley. What generally is lacking is a culture of constructive failure. Constructive failure. The ability to tolerate failure, proceed with your career, and do it again, and take your experience and cash in on it as an asset. Still many business cultures where when you fail, you're finished. And that includes Western Europe. I find that the, probably the most um, entrepreneurial cultures with regard to innovation and failure are the United States and China. Uh, Chinese are natural, absolutely natural entrepreneurs, more so than India in a sense of being able to take risk and fail. And um, so the culture of failure and constructive failure is what defines this place. I've lived it. Uh, I've had plenty of failures. Uh, if, you if you sort of tally up everything I've done and you actually take a look at the money made, not just the outcomes, because a lot of these outcomes are what I call horizontal outcomes, meaning that it didn't succeed, we sold it. We gave it away. We merged it. It survived, but nobody made a bunch of money. But when you take a look at all of that, um, I've had some screaming financial failures. Uh, Go, was, Go was a huge financial failure for the time. Um, when I tell you the amount of money we lost, it's going to seem paltry, especially compared to things like Webvan, which, <laughs> which basically left a billion dollar crater in the valley. But we left about a $75 million crater in the valley, and that was huge at the time for a startup company. Interestingly enough, um, this context of constructive failures left me with a very different view of what failure is and what success is and also gave me a different view of my failures. I would say most of us who were at, at, at Go do not see it as a failure in a broad sense. Most of us who were at Go see it as being a success in terms of the development of character, esprit de corps, and the tools for dealing with immense challenges in complex businesses. That group, if you take a look at the executive team of that, of that company, Mycoma went off to found Netscape. Stratus Glavos went off to found Verisign. Um, uh, Jerry Kaplan went off to found OnSale. 
Bill, went, Bill Campbell went off to run Intuit. I went off to run LucasArts Entertainment. And we can go on and on and on. So in terms of failure, it was actually one of those experiences we all look at and feel good about because of the way we behaved and the way we worked together and the quality of what we did together. Now, compare that to Crystal Dynamics, which I did a couple of years later. Crystal Dynamics is a company that is distinguished in my career because it's the only time I ever took a job and got a raise. Every single time I've ever taken work, I have given up cash. And I usually make more money at the other side. Crystal Dynamics was, a, was also distinguished because it was one of the most in, um, uh, incremental changes I've ever made in my career. I've been running a game company. I was going to run a game company. My goal was to make the second one as successful as the first one. It was a very simple goal. It didn't work out that way. It was a terrible failure for me. Now, mind you, people made money on that deal. Um, that deal went, went sideways and then up. And, um, and so unlike Go, where people lost money, people made money at Crystal Dynamics. Why was it a failure? It's a failure because I failed. Because the quality of what I did was not good. Because I didn't have the passion to persevere and do what that company needed to do in terms of right-sizing it and redirecting it. So what failure meant um, for me after Crystal Dynamics was very different than what I thought failure meant when I was early in my career at a place like Apple. Um, and Claris spoiled me. I mean, everybody should have the opportunity to work in a company that's very successful and then in a company that fails. Because working in a company that's very successful, you get a context for understanding what success is in an operating business. But you don't learn much. What you really learn, and when you learn, is when you're confronted failure. And that, I think, is the, is the primary root of constructive failure and why this valley is so successful with failure. Okay. I, think, I think you can learn from the failures of others. I think ultimately the only way to really, really to get your money's worth out of failure better be your own, <laughs> right? Um, and, and that's largely because the, that, that hollowness in your stomach the disappointment of 250 people whose lives and families depend on you, the chagrin of your board members, you got to feel it. You got to feel it if you're going to learn it. And um, I think some people are lucky enough to go through life failing little or not at all. I don't think they're probably as wise as the guys who have actually failed. The preceding program is copyrighted by Stanford University. Please visit us at stanford.edu.